On today's episode, we are going to discuss westward expansion in the United States. Who is John L. O'Sullivan? John L. O'Sullivan was an American writer, editor, and political columnist. He first used the term Manifest Destiny in 1845. He promoted the annexation or the taking of the Texas and Oregon territories by the United States. How is the idea of Manifest Destiny represented in this painting? Well, this painting is entitled American Progress. It's a painting by John Gast. It is a representation of the modernization of the New West. It depicts Columbia, the woman in the painting, as a representation of the United States. It depicts Columbia leading the civilization westward with the American settlers. She's bringing light from the east to the west. She's also stringing a telegraph wire that appears to be from the east to the west. She's holding a school textbook that will instill knowledge. And there are different states of economic activity and new methods of transportation. This painting is entitled Westward the Course of Empire Takes Its Way. It is a painting by Emanuel Leutze. It was published in 1861. It has its title taken from the 1726 poem by Bishop Berkeley. It was a phrase that was often quoted in the era of Manifest Destiny. This painting is a representation of the widely held belief that civilization had steadily moved westward throughout history. What were the reasons for westward expansion? Well, specifically there are three reasons. We're going to discuss land, money, and freedom. Prospects of land were a major motivation for pioneers heading out west. In major cities like Philadelphia, Boston, and New York, there was becoming an overpopulation within the cities. Land was expensive in the east, but it was much cheaper in the west. Money and opportunity were motivating factors for migrating pioneers out west. The technological advancements such as the cotton gin and the mechanical reaper improved the efficiency of agriculture while decreasing the need for workers. New opportunities included logging, road building, and the construction of the railroad, and the California gold rush and its prospect of riches motivated many. And lastly, a motivating factor for migrating west was freedom. Slaves could pursue freedom from slavery by leaving the south for the west. Pioneers curious about opportunities out west wanted freedom from government restrictions. And Manifest Destiny was the belief that the citizens of the United States had a God-given right and obligation to expand their influence and borders from the Atlantic to the Pacific. There were natural and man-made gateways that assisted in westward expansion. Examples include rivers and canals. A canal is a man-made river. The flat Great Plains made great for traveling. And there were many trails that had already been trodden on before and cooperation with Native Americans. Barriers are the opposite of gateways. Barriers are obstacles that pioneers had to face in traveling west. Examples include the Rocky Mountains, drought, unexpected weather, and conflicts with Native Americans. So how exactly did the United States expand? Well, we have six examples we're going to talk about. The Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition, Florida, Texas, Oregon, and California. What was the Louisiana Purchase? In 1803, the United States purchased the Louisiana Territory from France for $15 million. The Louisiana Purchase opened the door to westward expansion during the 1800s, when the U.S. gained and settled land all across the American West. What was the Lewis and Clark Expedition? In 1804, American President Thomas Jefferson appointed Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to explore the Louisiana Territory. The Lewis and Clark expedition lasted from May the 14th of 1804 to September the 23rd of 1806. How did Florida join the United States? In 1819, the territory of Florida was ceded or given to the United States through a treaty. In 1821, Florida was made into an official United States territory. Florida officially became a state on March the 3rd of 1845. How did Texas join the United States? In 1836, Texas formally declared their independence from Mexico. The Alamo was an old Spanish mission in San Antonio, Texas. Texan leaders had turned it into a military fort. General Santa Ana of Mexico marched on the Alamo with more than 1,500 Mexican soldiers. Santa Ana's forces eventually attacked. The Texans fought bravely but were defeated. Santa Ana's men killed almost every Texan rebel in the Alamo. In April of 1836, United States General Sam Houston led the Texas Army to victory at the Battle of San Jacinto. Texas finally won its independence from Mexico. In 1845, Texas became the 28th state to join the Union. How did Oregon join the United States? An 1818 treaty declared that the United States and England would share the Oregon Territory. 
This agreement lasted for 25 years. The 1846 Oregon Treaty split the Oregon Territory at the 49th parallel. The United States took the southern portion, while England took the northern portion. The picture in the top left indicates the Oregon Territory. You can see in 1853 where the Oregon Territory is split into two. The green represents the Washington Territory. And then in 1859, you can see the state of Oregon surrounded by the Washington Territory. How did California join the United States? In 1846, the United States invaded Mexico. This started the Mexican-American War. As a result of the United States winning the war, they gained California. In 1848, James Marshall discovered gold at Sutter's Sawmill in California. In 1850, California became the 31st state of the Union. So there you have it, the very interesting and complex history of Western expansion in the United States. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to check out our Teachers Pay Teachers store. Hop on over to our Instagram, like us on Facebook, and check out our Pinterest boards. Hop on over to our YouTube channel where you can check out many exciting videos like the one that you've just seen. And check out our blog at www.bowtieguyandwife.com. See ya!